You might have heard, but on Monday, July 11th, U.S. President Joe Biden was instructed to reveal a cosmic image that had been captured by the brand new James Webb Space Telescope. And one of the most prevailing opinions was that the image looked a bit unexpected. Galaxies that were portrayed in the raw, unedited photo looked like stretched out strings of taffy, and this baffled many present. However, it does appear that the photo is able to lend credence to one of Einstein's lesser known theories, and that is absolutely fascinating. This is how the James Webb Space Telescope's first color image proves this Einstein theory. The James Webb Telescope Named after NASA's former leader in the 1960s, the James Webb Space Telescope was originally conceived to be an all-out upgrade over the Hubble Space Telescope. Its design enables it to capture clear views of the universe from space and do a lot of things that Hubble simply can't. The James Webb Space Telescope has a revolutionary loadout of powerful scientific instruments that are housed in its Integrated Science Instrument Module, ISIM. This is situated behind the telescope's primary mirror, on the cold side of the scope, safely protected by the sun shield. The primary mirror itself is one of the aspects of the telescope that enables it to do so much because it is made up of 18 hexagonal segments that, when assembled, create a mirror that is 6.5 meters across. This is several times the size of Hubble Telescope's mirror, and actually there's a reason that it is made up of so many segments. If the Hubble Telescope's mirror was the same size as Webb's, it would be far too heavy to be able to be launched into orbit. The Webb teams had to think of new techniques to get a mirror that size into space. The Webb mirror segments are made from beryllium, which is very light but very strong, and as a result the mirror's unit areas are only one-tenth of the Hubble mirror's weight. The team also decided to build each of the segments to be able to fold on each other. This meant that the mirror would be able to assemble itself in space after launch, and each of the 18 segments of the giant mirror is an equilateral hexagon in design, which allows a high filling factor and six-fold symmetry. This means there are no gaps between the segments, like there would be if each was a circle. This way, when the mirror is assembled, it makes one big gapless hexagonal mirror. Seeing into the past Telescopes with the biggest mirrors will be able to see the faintest objects because they can capture more light. Any photographer will tell you that controlling the amount of light you can see will dramatically increase the chances of a good picture. If you imagine particles of light as ping pong balls and the mirrors as a bucket, James Webb's larger mirror means you'll be able to catch more balls. This is one of the most absolutely fundamental aspects necessary for observing the earliest stars and galaxies that were created in the universe billions of years ago. As we know, the universe is always growing and expanding ever since the explosive creation of everything in the Big Bang. Because we know this, we know that the light from the ancient parts of the cosmos is absolutely insanely far away, literally billions of light years. This means that the furthest light in the universe from us here on Earth left its original location billions of years ago, and so when we use the telescope to observe it, it's like peeking into the far, far, farthest past. Thanks to the array of mirrors and other scientific instruments aboard the James Webb Space Telescope, we will be able to see the first stars and galaxies that were ever formed in space. This is not something that could have been done using Hubble. The first image. And so, we come to the first picture that was received from the Webb Telescope, and some galaxies look decidedly odd. As mentioned, they are kind of stretched, like taffy. This is because the universe itself has actually warped our view of the deepest cosmos. Astronomers pointed the James Webb Space Telescope at a particular cluster of galaxies that we've given the incredibly catchy name of SMAX 0723 recently. As you probably already know, galaxies are in fact massive, gigantic celestial bodies that contain hundreds of billions of stars millions of black holes, and perhaps, though we've been unable to prove this, possibly trillions of planets. If we use our own home solar system as an example, we'll see that there are eight planets, that we know of, in orbit around our Sun, and our Sun is just a star like many others. So then, if there are in fact billions of stars in a galaxy, then probability would suggest there are many, many more planets out there. However, with the density of a galaxy and its contents, their total mass ends up warping up space, like a dumbbell sitting on an inflatable mattress. 
This warped space basically forms a lens that we look through, which means that the light from the galaxies behind the galactic cluster that Webb looks at is distorted by its mass. This process has a name, and that name is gravitational lensing. Einstein. Where did this terminology come from? Well, you've guessed it, Albert Einstein. Einstein predicted the effect of gravitational lensing over a hundred years ago, and it explains how the galaxies that we can view are magnified, stretched, distorted, or twisted. NASA astrophysicist Jane Rigby explains, they've been magnified by the gravity of the cluster, just like Einstein said they would. In the image itself, the group of white galaxies are actually over 4 billion years old and were formed about the same time as the Sun and this planet of ours. The white galaxies magnify and alter the view of anything behind them from the Webb telescope's perspective. Of course, the further objects in the image, the red and very stretched out galaxies are among the oldest in the universe. Harold Ebeling, an astronomer from the University of Hawaii Institute for Astronomy, explained further. All the super faint, dark red tiny dots, as well as many of the brighter, strangely shaped objects in this astounding image, are extremely distant galaxies that no human eye has seen before, Ebling said. But this is just the beginning, because soon the James Webb Space Telescope will be used to look even further into the past, over 13 and a half billion years ago, soon after the first stars and galaxies were formed. What next? That's not all the telescope can do, though because unlike Hubble, Webb will be able to use infrared to view light through that spectrum. This means it will be able to see far more of the universe than Hubble. Infrared has far longer wavelengths than visible light, so the light waves more efficiently make it through cosmic clouds and get scattered around. But even that is not all that there is for this amazing new piece of scientific genius to do. There are also such things as exoplanets, a term that means planets that are outside of our own solar system. These are far-off worlds that we have very little to no knowledge of, apart from that they are out there, being a bit like our planet, but different. These exoplanets have long remained out of our best scientists' reach, and while that is still physically true, Webb can absolutely help us to get a little more knowledge about them. In fact, it will revolutionize our understanding of these distant worlds. The spectrometers that are aboard the James Webb Space Telescope will be able to decipher which molecules, such as carbon dioxide, water, methane, etc., exist in the atmospheres of faraway worlds, whether they are gas giants or rocky worlds like ours. Webb will be able to look at these exoplanets that are in the Milky Way galaxy, and we might just find something that changes everything by using this technology. For as long as man has looked up into the sky, he has wondered what's out there, and even who might be out there, wondering the same thing, asking the same questions, and wishing for the same answers. With the power and scientific accomplishment of the James Webb Space Telescope, some of these questions might soon be able to be answered. Imagine if we were able to discover a planet with the same molecular makeup as our own. Wouldn't that surely mean that there could be another human race, or some other evolutionary equivalent on that world? You're thinking Star Trek, but the James Webb Space Telescope will bring us one step closer to be able to bring something like that much closer to a reality. In the meantime, continue to look at the stars, because it's up there somewhere, a million miles away, watching the galaxy for you. Be sure to smack that like button, and make sure you've subscribed. Space Infinity will keep you updated on every astronomical event.